Putting aside the obvious reason, the past year has brought about a dramatic amount of change, and no matter who you are, everybody has been pissing and moaning about it. Even the small stuff. You want a car nowadays? Too bad, you get an SUV. You want something with a manual transmission? Tough sh You want something over, say, 500 horsepower? You're gonna get all-wheel drive, and you are going to like it. I don't know about that last one, because what would you say if I told you that there was a merry band of rebels based in, say, Sant'Agata Bolognese. Would you join the fight? For the avoidance of doubt, the revolutionary part from our merry band of Italian rebels is not what we are looking at here. Rather, we've seen this since, what, 2014? That is to say, a 5.2 liter, 90 degree V10 in this flavor, 610 horsepower, 413 pound feet of torque. Now the revolutionary part, how many drive wheels are connected to that engine? The answer would not be four, rather it is two, it's the rear wheels that goes through a seven speed dual clutch. Now there is a theme that is going to come up throughout this entire episode, and that is the construction of the vehicle. And remember how Mean Gene used to wax on poetically about a stack of dimes when it came to welding? Well, that is the dry sump lubrication system we are talking about there. And yeah, we can get excited about a side oiler and all of the performance benefits. But here, rather than me give the car back with everything intact, I'm probably going to take that and put it up on the wall here in the hangar. Anyway, considering what this car is about, we should probably focus on performance figures. And that I'm gonna confuse you a little bit here and go through different units of measure. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour. 3.5 seconds. VMAX, 201 miles an hour, or 324 kilometers an hour. Another lovely break from the 5,000 pound Germans. This time, not a Hyundai. 3,326 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,509 kilograms. With that. Oh my God! That sounds magnificent! But it pulls from about 3,000 RPM all the way up to about 55. Oh God, that sounds great! All the way up to about 5,500 RPM. Then there is that transmission. It. I may be a 911 manual guy, but this works incredibly well. It stays in the gear. Oh, whoa! It stays in the gear you tell it to stay in, and God does it continue to pull. As you just saw, I don't need to tell you, you have complete control over the vehicle. If you want to lose the ass end of this vehicle, you can absolutely do it. And just kind of as an aside here, the reason why so many of these things are made with all-wheel drive is to keep them from launching. That's just a crap ton of power back there, and very few folks have the car control skills to be able to keep this thing shiny side up. And may I say grazie for putting the paddle shifters in the correct position, which is on a steering column, not the steering wheel, and they are the correct size. They're kind of in the right place, no matter where you are in the shift range. And may I say, when you're pushing this thing, whether it's hard on roads like this or on a track, you are most most likely using second and third gears. It's that kind of a car. So double wishbones front and rear, yada yada, mid-engine placement, yada yada. Aside from the name, what are you really paying for when it comes to a Lamborghini? Answer being absolutely the construction. Let's start with the foundation. Here we've talked about tubs before, we did this recently with a Corvette, but that car, it's made of aluminum, significantly cheaper. This is made of a combination of carbon fiber and aluminum. Let's start with that structural piece, which is the foundation, and that would be the tub. And here, like aluminum, all of that comes together almost like Lego bricks, where they put the pieces together, and that creates something incredibly strong in which to hang the front subframe off the car, as well as the engine and the rear subframe. By making it carbon fiber, yes, it makes it significantly more expensive, but also significantly stiffer. Then there are 
the suspension pieces, like the double wishbones, those are not only connected to the combination of carbon fiber and aluminum structural bits, those themselves are made of aluminum. Then there are the body panels, and this is a combination of aluminum and composite, so you really can't say carbon fiber, and it depends on the panel. Like, for example, this and some of the other bits are aluminum, where the doors and this tonneau cover is made of composites. So in bringing together all of these disparate raw materials, yes, it does make the vehicle significantly more expensive than, say, a C8, but it also makes the vehicle significantly lighter. As a basis of comparison, a 992, the most basic one that has over 200 horsepower less than this, is about the same weight. Something incredibly hard to accomplish in today's day and age. Now, while we're discussing those two examples, two rather important points. Number one, this is about seven inches longer in wheelbase than a 992. And number two, very similar weight distribution to a C8. It'd be 60 in the rear, 40 in the front. But back to the point of what makes a Lamborghini a Lamborghini, it's not just the construction materials, it's also everything is screwed together. A couple of examples of that, the exhaust tips. They don't look like something that comes out of the ass end of a car. Rather, they look like something comes off that airplane. The nose, it kind of changes its look as it moves to rear-wheel drive duty, but more importantly, the interior, and this is something that's more all Lamborghinis, not just this one. Now, Lamborghini, they don't make it a secret that these things are kind of filed under the group of Audi. I don't know why Volkswagen Group does that. But there is one thing that absolutely has maintained the trip from Ingolstadt to Santa Agata Bolognese, and that is the fit and finish of the interior. But most importantly, they don't commit the sin that say Aston Martin does now, where they buy whole parts from Mercedes and stick them without changes inside of a supercar. Here, they've made changes to make it look like a Lamborghini and the bits that don't need changing, like the door lock buttons, that's directly lifted from an Audi. But the fit and finish specifically, that is what you would expect from Ingolstadt. So it's kind of bringing all the good, but leaving all of the stuff that's too Germanic up in Bavaria. So you will not be surprised to learn that there are different drive modes on offer here. What is the surprise is how much of an impact they make on the driving dynamics of this, a rear-wheel drive Lamborghini. Like for example, you and I are on the road mode, they call it Strag. Uh, and this, you definitely feel that there is a light nose. Now depending on where you look up the weight difference between this and the all-wheel drive Spider, it's as much as 400 pounds. I have a hard time believing it's that much of a difference just for the all-wheel drive system. But I could believe there's a significant difference because you feel a light nose. Like this thing, there is a significant amount of understeer, very much like a 911, but nothing obtrusive. That said, one would be surprised how well suited this mode is to the street. I'd go so far as to saying that the ride is downright compliant. But enough of this mode, let's go into sport. And here a number of things clean up. I do need to clarify, even in the street mode, you can't honestly say there's any pitch, there's any squat or any dive. You do feel a little lightness in the nose, but here that lightness is cleaned up and you can push the car harder. But what's important about this mode, you still have a lot of the safety aids, so you can push it without the fear of driving this thing off a cliff. I go so far as to saying it is still docile, but this is where you get all the aggression, all the extra power from the 10 cylinder, and the thing just wants to pull. Now it's in this mode where we better understand the steering. And for the avoidance of doubt, in all modes, the steering is good feedback, it's direct. However, in street mode, it is just too light. In this mode, it begins to clean it up a bit. It begins to clean up that lightness in the nose. However, this is where we need to go into Corsa, track mode, and a lot of things happen here. It's not just the steering that changes, it's the dynamics of the dampers that change, which clean up the lightness in the nose and gets the proper weighting. And this is where you can push the car much more aggressively, but a huge hint vice here, you lose some of the uh, safety aid, shall we say. So this is more of a professional mode, that's what I would call it, but this is where you can absolutely get the most rewarding driving dynamics out of this vehicle. And I I'm just, I'm kind of blown away how good this car is. And I know I'm completely biased to 911s, you guys know this about me, but this, it's good. It's really good. And then there are the brakes. Here, this good stopping power as demonstrated throughout this entire episode. The pedal modulation, 
it's kind of so-so. Bringing all of those disparate pieces together, uh, this, from a driving dynamics perspective, is an impressive effort. Uh, it should not be dismissed by the folks from Modena or those from Zuffenhausen. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Absence Game, with today's contestant, what I believe to be the first ever Lamborghini that we are featuring in a round of this game. Now granted, our guest host Brian did feature the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster, but that was with Brian, not with me, so let's dive into the 2021 Lamborghini Huracan Evo Rear Wheel Drive Spider. Yes, a lot of names, but a lot of money. 229000 $428. To that, we add the color. You would think that's orange, but no. It is arancio, which is orange in Italian. However, that is a pearl effect orange. Now, I do have to share with you, it's not cheap. $9,800. But there is something that most people don't know. Uh, a UN resolution that requires anyone that owns a Lamborghini to get it in either like a pastel color or something like this orange. So by paying this $9,800, you are complying with a UN law. So there you go. We press on to the contrast stitching, $900, far compared to the paint. If you want that contrast stitching on the steering wheel, $250 extra. Then the front axle lift system. I do not understand why these are optional on Porsches. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, even the Corvette, because this is cheap insurance at $3,200. First time you hit the front of this car, it will be well north of $3,200. Then we press on to leather floor mats, $600. Then the dynamic power steering. This is kind of like the power steering plus in Porsches, where it boosts the assist of the power steering in like parking lots. But it does something the Porsche doesn't do, in that it provides counter steer on the opposite end of the spectrum, so it makes the steering a bit heavier. Very neat trick, not cheap, $2,700. Then ambient lighting package, $1,100. And then cruise control. This I had to confirm with the folks at Lamborghini. I thought it was maybe some sort of special level two autonomy. It is not. It is just cruise control, which is optional. On a $230,000 car, $900. Then if you want the windscreen, the frame painted in high gloss black, which does look pretty cool, especially with Arancho, uh, $400. Then a combination of the roof lining and a portion of the tonneau cover in high gloss black, $1,400. Then the embroidered logos on the seats. Kind of a nice touch. I don't know if I would get this or not, but it does look pretty cool, $1,000. Uh, the techno package, I have no idea what this is, $3,800. Then the smartphone interface. It's another one I had to confirm with Lamborghini. Uh, yes, it does include the Apple CarPlay, but it also includes web radio as well as some web apps that work in conjunction with the phone in the smartphone interface in the car. This is the only thing I'm throwing up on. On a $230,000 car, Apple CarPlay should be standard. It should not be an additional $3,600, even if you package other stuff in it. Then we press on to one of the key reasons why this particular car is something you would call eyeball, answer being the style package. Translated, that is gloss black trim strategically placed on the exterior of the car, $2,000. Then if you're gonna do that, you might as well do the 20-inch Narvi rims that are black. For the avoidance of doubt, 19 inch wheels are fitted to standard. These are additional $7,200. Then if you're gonna spring for the Narvi rims, you might as well dress up your brake calipers in what other color than Arancha, and that would be $1,400. Then the sport seats, $7,500. Then the sound system, they call this the Sensonum or something like that. $3,800. Now being we spent all that money dressing up the exterior of the vehicle, we really should tie all those details together. And one of the best ways to do that is to have the diffuser as well as the rear bumper finished in high gloss black trim. And that would be an additional $3,600. Then really we have to put the cherry on top and that is to change the leather on the inside of the car to the Evo trim sport leather. That's an additional $4,400. Then you may remember the UN resolution that applies to these things. Turns out there is another more local law that applies. You see, you must be punished because you have selected a 5.2 liter V10 with over 600 horsepower. So the punishment comes in the form of a gas guzzler tax 
from the US government for $2,100. And the only other thing we have to add is the destination and handling from Santa Agata Bolognese for $3,695 for a total retail price of, including this fancy car cover here, $294,000. $273. So as a follow-up to that, the seats, wow, they are expensive, but yes, they do make an incredible difference. And something that's rather unusual here, uh, they're manual. It's like an old school, like ratchet lever kind of seat where you pull this thing here and moves the seat forward and backward. And there's like a ratchet on the side that moves the front up and down. I kind of like that. Uh, it's not like the GT3 sports seats where one has to get tools out uh, to make adjustments to that seat. And this does kind of fill my whole ski boot analogy where it keeps people my size in the car. Something very important for a vehicle of this limit of adhesion. And then, oh, uh, one more thing. Well, hopefully now you can hear me a bit better. Uh, the driving personality of it doesn't really change all that much. I can hear myself think, which is a good thing. But then does one really have a Lamborghini so they can hear themselves think? I don't think that's the case. Uh, the top is something you would expect from the Volkswagen Group, which is to say a good thing. Something else that really stands out here, and I know this is my pilot nerd talking, toggle switches throughout the interior. Again, grazie. Being you guys can see the direction this is heading, we are going to dive right into the wish list. And yes, I'm going to put the obvious on the wish list, but not for the obvious reasons. I want a manual transmission. Yes, the folks in Sant'Agata Bolognese will most likely laugh at me. But the reason why I want the manual transmission is the same reason I wanted it in a Porsche GT3, a corporate cousin to this. You see, what, eight years ago, they came out with an updated GT3 PDK only. People got kind of pissed off, but they dealt with it. Then they said, maybe we made the wrong decision there, and they brought a special edition out. And in the second-hand market, that car went for a million dollars. And they said, oh, we should probably fix that. So in the 991.2 GT3, they offered it in a manual, and the take rate on those is something like 25, 30%. And that's not a car you just go in, you buy, and it depreciates. That's a car you have to beg to buy, and if you get it, it never depreciates. So you see where I'm going here. This is a fantastic driver's car. I didn't expect it to be such a good driver's car. However, if we add the manual transmission, we get two benefits. Number one, an Italian driver's car with some old world charm thrown in. And number two, a secondary market that does not currently exist in the Lamborghini world. One that has already been proven by another well-known driver's car. And I'd go so far as to saying the take rate would be something like 30%. And here's why I say that. Think about how many vehicles still exist today that are this kind of equation with that kind of naturally aspirated horsepower driving the rear wheels through a manual transmission. Then add in the fact how much people are paying on the secondary market for 15, 20 year old Ferraris, Porsches, and Lamborghinis that still have a manual transmission. And now I turn this around to you to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word. Moto Man, TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. What else should we be adding to this wish list? And I do have to say one more thing here. I'm still a Porsche guy. This, it ain't my cup of tea, but it is magnificent. And yeah, every once in a while, one does need a cup of Italian coffee. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.